So I wanted to just lightly touch um, this. I always pay attention when I get the same questions and in the last two days I've gotten four questions um, about the difference between the, the vigilance, the dedication, the devotion, whatever you want to call that, that brings you back to the moment over and over and over and over and over um, until it becomes what you are instead of uh, some kind of a discipline or a practice. And then the person trying or attempting to achieve, it's, it's, it's night and day of course, what we find by just simple experience is the, the doing and the trying, um, it never works out. You know, it, it, it creates tension, it creates uh, comparison, it creates hierarchy, it creates, of course, failure, because it's, it's, it's using the wrong tool. It's using the contracted self and all the skills that the self or the, the, the separate person has developed to open to that that is just simply fundamentally present. You know, it's, it's the opposite of trying and the contraction of trying. It's, it's open and vast and available and um, everywhere. It's, 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 it's the being um, um, that um, is just temporarily been covered up by um, but the belief of thought and the identity of conditioning and the identity of, of the past and the fears of the future. So to the experience of trying is the school that teaches you how um, it always fails. It, it never really works out. If, if, if there's a great earnestness and, and integrity to, to pay attention to it. The bringing the vigilance, the devotion, the willingness to bring the attention, because through the attention, awareness flows. So bringing the attention back to, and I say back because the attention mostly is in front of the eyes. So you bring the attention sort of back and behind the eyes and let it sort of settle unto itself, which is this living, alive, alert, aware presence. And it's always available. So the vigilance allows you to break the habit of living in front of the eyes and believing the thoughts and the projections of the thoughts on, on the mirror of consciousness, if you want to call it that, and bringing it back to where it's just simply looking and hearing and moving and um, it just simply sees the appearances that come and go. And in that seeing is, is a great wisdom. So it has insights and um, it, um, it sees the compensation and it sees perhaps the, the conditioning that created that uh, compensation or a certain identity um, that one wants to project on oneself or the other. So the difference is to just simply come back, bring the attention back unto itself. And then there's a kind of a, a fusing or a resting where the attention now rests or abides into the fundamental ground, which of course the recognition is it's, it's everywhere. It's the visible, it's the invisible. Um, and there's nowhere to, there's no in, there's no out, there's nowhere to look or not look. But until that innate recognition takes place, there does require, um, I'm sure there's an exception, I've never seen it, but I'm sure there's an exception, because there always is. And that is to, uh, that vigilance, that earnestness, that willingness, that devotion. And one just comes back, not to a conceptual sense of ground, but one comes back to um, this, it's a felt sense, it's a, it's a sense of, um, it's an aliveness and an ease and an openness and uh, a, a curious sort of engagement in, in life. And then that, that contraction, that trying, it's actually made apparent 
that it comes from a sense of lack, a sense of fear, a sense of training or conditioning culturally or family. But it's all compensation. It, uh, it actually will be the exact opposite of what you're wanting to recognize. Um, so it's uh, bringing the intention back, bringing the attention back, a felt sense and a live sense moment by moment, all new. That's the gift of it. Every moment, it's all new. And that coming back allows that to be recognized. 